We are changing and we go to the very north. And Henry Morto, who will speak now, is from Finland. And Henry in Finland is a special phenomena <laughs> because the Finnish people, they leave their forests and their woods and they go to the cities, mainly to Helsinki. But Henry did the other way around. He is a city boy, but he went to the forests and on the land. And he farms now together with his colleague the oldest biodynamic farm, the Rekola farm in Finland. And it's since many hundreds of years in the property of this family. And another thing is special about Henry, because when you are in the Finnish forests and there is no, no, no people there, uh, you are just alone. And then all of a sudden you encounter someone, as he is Finnish, he don't speak. <laughs> but Henry is a Finnish man who speaks. <laughs> Liebe Freunde, <laughs> dear friends, mon ami, hyvät ystävät. As Uli mentioned, I come from the very north. And uh, when you come from the very north, you come from the country and landscape and the nature of polarities. And for me, I always say, I also have a two polarities in my life. I have two blessings. I am a farmer, and I am a farmer in Finland. <laughs> that would be very boring, so I have also two challenges. I am a farmer, and I'm a farmer in Finland. <laughs> so Finland is, we could say Finland is the world's most northern agricultural country. And it's quite crazy when you start to think about it. The Rekola farm, it is 63 degrees north. And if you, if you look Finland landscape, Finland nature, it's always dualities, always with polarities. You have the midnight sun in the summer. The sun doesn't go down. Seriously, it doesn't go down. And now in the winter, well, now it's getting a bit easier. The sun is starting to rise again over the horizon, but it's completely darkness. And you have the phenomena of lightness and dark. You have the ice, you have the warmth. Even geographically, we are always in the polarities. We are between east and west. We have the longest border with Russia in the whole Europe. But still, we always felt we were also part of the, part of the west. Finland was the last country in Europe where actually uh, exoteric Christianity arrived. And here we can see the Rekola farm barn. And uh, the painting you see, it was a present. And I can say it's, it's quite a nice present. Um, last summer, we celebrated 400 years of the same family. And in Finland, that is a very long time. And uh, Rekola farm, like Uli mentioned, is, is quite unique in the way that it's the first biodynamic farm in Finland. And my mentor, the old farmer of the family, Kalervo Rekola, he started biodynamic farming in there 72. And to, in that time in Finland, to convert a farm to a biodynamic farm, it was very difficult. His father, father, for example, you know, he said to him, boy, you are completely mad. What are you doing? You're ruining our 400-year family farm. But Kalervo discovered biodynamic farming in university. So he had an academic background. He knew it's the most best way to farm. And um, yes, we have a very diverse farm as well. We have uh, cows, of course, naturally. We have uh, strawberries nowadays. My colleague, Joana Rekola, he's uh, now an expert strawberry farmer. And like Uli mentioned, he, he usually, when I speak now, maybe 10 sentences, Joana would say maybe one word. He's an extremely silent person. 
And uh, we have a market garden, which is my responsibility with my wife and with the garden team. And for my biography, it's, it's also full of polarities. Um, to really understand why I'm, uh, what I want to speak here also, and, and why I choose the title Farm Individuality, New Spiritual Quality of Time and Work. It is my personal experience and my own studies, my research, almost over, to, over, over 20 years of biodynamic farming, and mainly the experience in a Recola farm that gave me the courage to come here now to speak to you about farm individuality. And I have to say, it is of course very personal experience, but for me, the farm individuality, we can, we can grasp it, we can feel it, we can learn from it through work and through understanding the cyclical nature of time. And how I discovered biodynamic farming, it's, it's also quite an interesting and funny story in a way, but I tried to make it short this time. 20 years ago, I was 17, and some reason I found an interest of Roche Crusan symbolism and alchemy, and, and I needed to know more. And in Finland, of course, if you want to know something more, you go to library. And I went to the library and I asked a, a lady behind the computer that, um, do you have any books of alchemy? <laughs> the lady, lady who raises his hair, her head and looks okay. Let's see, this young man wants to learn something. And, and, and she looks for the computer and says, yes, we have one book. I was like, oh, well, yes, nice. And um, yes, it's in the children's section. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I went to get to the book and uh, it was a fantastic book. And in, you know, in books there sometimes you have these small info boxes. And there was one info box at one point that says, in the early 20th century, there was a German uh, scientist, Dr. Rudolf Steiner, who invented biodynamic farming, which is the one way to see modern alchemy. And for that, it was like bling. <laughs> and such a um, strong personal experience afterwards, I, I of course, I wanted to see the world, I traveled quite a lot, uh, around the world, and in 2008, I arrived in Recola Farm to do a five-year uh, internship, five, uh, un sorry, five months training. And it became quite clear for me after these five months working in the Recola Farm, and, and you know, I am, I'm really, I am from Helsinki. I'm in concrete jungle. I've never even touched a tractor before I went to Recola Farm. And, um, after five months working in these polarities, you know, I come in the springtime, the nature is blooming, you see the, the summer, the intensive growing season, because in summer we, we basically work around the clock. 11 p.m., the sun is still shining, <laughs> and it's unbelievable, and you don't feel very tired. And then the autumn comes and the darkness starts to come, you see the decomposing, you see the death processes in nature. and. Um, I was actually writing a letter to my wife. It was quite nice. She was still living in Helsinki and I was living in a Rekola farm and we sent these old school letters, which is quite romantic and candles were burning and I remember it very strongly, the point. You know, you, you come from Helsinki, you, you live, you're, you're very young, you live quite active life. I have very good friends, artists, academics. Every weekend usually there's a party or something. It's, the life is very social in Helsinki. But then you go to Rekola Farm, another polarity, the most silent area of Finland. We call it Hame. And um, I, I start to think about, Henry, you're 26 now. You're 26 years old. You have never felt so good in your life, not just physically, also spiritually and in with my soul forces. What is the reason why you feel so good? I start to unpack my my uh, experiences during the, during the summer and okay, I have eaten, I have eaten biodynamic food five months made by Joana's mother, my colleague's mother, Sirka. Of course, that's one reason, that's a physical reason. I have worked five months 
in different ways, you know, you, you repair machines, you weed the carrots, the cows are running away, you chase them, you know, you do a lot of dif different physical work. Okay, maybe I feel so good because I do physical work. Hmm. I wasn't still convinced. And uh, I start to think more, okay, what is still that I'm experiencing? I have eaten very healthy, I have doing physical work, but what is changed when I came from the city to the, to the farm? And I start to think about, in Finnish, we have the word, word for vitality, to feel vitality, to feel vital. We call it elinvoima. If I say I feel vitality, I say I feel elinvoimainen. And to translate the word elinvoima, you have two, two parts. You have elin and you have voima. And to translate that to English, you have, um, you have organ and strength. You have organ and force. So when I said I feel vitality, I feel vital, I actually can say that my organism, my organs are very healthy. And then I understood the reason between the food, the work. It's about the rhythms. It's about the rhythms. Because I have worked five months in the farm. You have the same daily rhythm. We know that nowadays you have two places in the world where you actually have the same daily rhythm. You have farms and you have jails. <laughs> and uh, and uh, imagine in the society, I, I, I prefer to be in farm, by the way. <laughs> and uh, the sentence which I'm quoting here, study rhythm, rhythm carries life. The famous sentence by Dr. Rudolf Steiner to Dr. Rudolf Hauschka when asked, what is life? Study rhythm, rhythm carries life. And that was a, such a strong personal experience for me that I knew that my organs, my inner organs, were feeling vitality because I was connecting to these diverse rhythms of the farm life. You connect to the soil, you connect to the animals, you connect to the plants, you connect to the social plane, you connect to the cosmos. And I felt connected and I felt these rhythms, same daily rhythms, you eat same time, you sleep usually at the same times, that made me feel really good. And imagine coming from Helsinki, very active social life. You, well, you know, you don't, maybe you go sleep whenever you go to. And also the understanding that when we grow up as a young, young people, in a teenager, usually you start to rebel to your parents. Oh, I don't want to come to eat anymore. It's, you know, I want to be with my friends. And that's something we have to rediscover when we get older, to re rediscover the healthy ry rhythms. And farm for me, farm individuality was a place to rediscover these healthy rhythms. And uh, I have a second quote, which is a um, famous quote of uh, Bernard of Chartres from the School of Chartres in France which was very active in the 13th century. We are like dwarfs on the shoulders of giants. If we see more and further than our predecessors, it is not because we have keener vision or greater heights, but be because we are lifted up and borne aloft at their gigantic stature. And here is the picture 10 years ago, and here's uh, the old farmer Kalervo Rekola, and for me, and you can still see I have a little bit of the same belly. <laughs> so so time, time here doesn't, you know, fix injustice, or how do you say? And for me, this picture is it's very, it's very, it's full of symbolism. You can see my Chester like this, you know, hey, Kalervo, come on, can we preparate the compost, you know? <laughs> so let's do it. And Kalervo very nicely sitting there, and, and his, his Chester is saying, slow down, boy, you know, slow down. But uh, I have to tell you a few stories about Kalervo because he's uh, been such a big inspiration for me. And for me, the title also of this presentation, The New Spiritual Quality of Work. And I think that's also one of the main things we have to rediscover in the Western world is, is the meaning of the work. Why do we work? Who do we work? When do we work? 
And it's not an easy question. If you look to the future, we know 10, 20, 30 years time, automatization, artificial intelligence, robotics, it will replace a lot of different traditional works. So my experience in the farm individuality and the farm was that we have to rediscover what is work. And the best way to rediscover what is work is to bring creativity. Bring creativity in your daily life, daily life in your work. And as you know, there is no other place in the world which you need to have creativity than a farm. It's absolutely an amusement park of uh, creativity. And uh, Kalar Varekola, my mentor, which I basically learned everything in farming, such an inspiring person, yet again, extremely silent person. <laughs> Wouldn't speak here anything, absolutely nothing. And uh, I, I observed him working and I, I have perceptions of him working and I have to share a few stories which hopefully can, can bring this new quality of work. And very silent person, very ded dedicated to his work, but also very humble person, very, very humble person. And that's one of the reasons why the Rekola farm, imagine we are completely debt free. We are debt free, like we heard in the presentation just now, one of the key aspects of biodynamic farms and farm individuality can be that you can actually work and create the farm with minimum depth. And I feel that now as a big, big gift. Kalervo, he likes to work. He really likes to work. And I like to work as well. So we, we always get along really well. And uh, I had this one, one incident one time and, and I was sitting in the Rekola, Rekola yard and I was looking at Kalervo, his daily work. He, this is probably like five years ago, so he had, he had already retired, but you know, as you know, farmers never retire. So he's fixing machines there, you know. I'm, I'm sitting in the yard, it's been a long day, and I watch Kalervo, his daily work, and, and uh, because he's so humble, he always uses the work clothes till the very end, you know. <laughs> they doesn't look so nice, his working clothes. Um, he has this overall, this blue overall, he's fixing machines, there's oil leaks, there's oil stains around him in his face. And um, it's, it's getting autumn, you know, it's getting quite cold, so it's like you have this stuffing in this overall. And it's, you have, it's, it's broken, you see this white stuff coming out of here, and, 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 and uh, his, he, his zipper is broken as well. And uh, he has used... You, you know, you make hay bales, you use this very strong line, this strong uh, rope to, to, to make the hay bales. So he's, he's tightened up the, the overalls with, <laughs> with, with hay bale, <laughs> this white, white rope. And I watch him, you know, unbelievable person. This man is a master of soil science, he's an academic person. <laughs> and, and, and yet, he's almost, he's over 70 years old. And he looks like this and he's full of enthusiasm. He's full of life. And I look at him and <laughs> the, the hay bale, the white line is like hanging here and it's, it's there. And I look, wow, that's a Cisterian monk in the 13th century France. <laughs> that is a Cisterian monk dedicated his whole life, his work to healing the earth, to healing the soil, for making other people to experience the farm individual, the nature. Unbelievable. He was like a monk fixing machines and that's also a sign of this quality of new work we have to do the work when there is you know where there's disharmony when there's machines when there's inequality you have to bring the work there so that was one one of experience of color one and second one was one time that was in the early age and, and i have to tell you we had the official generation change at the Recola farm in year 2011 and um, Kalero was uh, also, uh, we, we said to him with Johanna, say, hey, you should go maybe holiday sometime, you know, to get a little bit rid of him also. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he went to, to, to one week holiday and I was sitting in the farm and I experienced something. Something is different. I can feel it in the, in the astral, astral plane of the farm that something has changed. This man, this man who has dedicated his life, his work, to this landscape, this farm, he's not physically here, but something is different. And then I understood, afterwards we had similar experiences, and I understood 
that because he has dedicated his life in this very humble quality to work with the land, to work with the soil, he had an extremely strong connection to the angel of the farm. The, the spiritual farm individuality aspect, he was completely connected. And when he was not in the farm, we could sense it. We could sense that this individuality was connecting us, the next generation. And that's also for me, I would like to share this because for me, the, the quality of work, it has to, has to be humbleness. It has to be altruistic. And I always remember about this old, old uh, wisdom, this Rosicrucian wisdom that we need to learn nowadays, that your personal spiritual development, which we all do in our own way, in our own, own pace, in our own, own speed, it always goes hand in hand with the development of the whole earth and the whole humanity. It's inseparable. And that's for me, it also very, it was very clear no, notice, very clear sign that when you work with biodynamic farming, when you work with anthroposophy, it's very practical. It's extremely practical. And um, yeah, another quality which com combines work and, and, and the quality of time that I would like still fast share here when we, when we talk about work was that uh, when I came to Rekla farm, we also had a home bakery. When Jonas Mater Sirka, she, she baked the home bakery over 33 years there. And it was very good quality bread, as, as you can believe. And um, I, I, first I went to the farm and I said, okay, I want to be a gardener, but I want to be a baker as well. So I also run the bakery four years. And yet again, I have no experience how to bake bread. I come from city, you know, I, I, I get my bread in the supermarket. But Sirka started to train me for, for one year and, and she had baked 33 years in the same bakery. And you can imagine when the winter comes, the coldness comes, you know, minus 20, minus 25. And you can, you can go from the fields, you can go to this warm bakery where we heat the oven, this big oven with these meter logs. And you can feel the quality of the warmth when you go to bakery. And um, I learned to bake commercially less than one year. And I think afterwards, when I think it, one reason was because Sirka as well, Jonas' mother, extremely humble person, extremely humble person. And um, she did the same rhythmical work, 33 years in that bakery. And, and she did it with a gesture that you do it always with something else, someone else. And then this city boy comes to this bakery and I could connect the quality of the work in the atmosphere of the bakery. I could remember her 33 year work when I entered to that physical space. That was a real experience that I, that I could actually connect to the ethical sphere and understand the rhythms, understand the, the routines, understand how you learn work. That was a very strong, strong experience as well for me when you think about learning work because you have to remember I am from the cities. Um, just want to show you about a little bit uh, of the Rekola farm and as you can see from the sense, sense percep perception view that you are strongly with the elements. The elements are everywhere. And this is uh, this red hut that has been here in the three pictures that's uh, probably like 200 years old wood log house. And we probably won't see it quite now, but well, nice. Um, the experience of, 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 of time, of nature, of landscape, of perception in Finland, I try to, try to a little bit artic articulate here. It's an experience, if you remember what Steiner also spoke about the spirit, the spirit in agriculture, the spirit in the human, the human eye. And an experience that I had when you come from city to the landscape of, of, of nature, of this forest, like Uli mentioned, that no one speaks anything. <laughs> and you, you come there and uh, immediately I get an experience that, that my eye actually, my, my individual eye, it's not, it's not only here, it's in the landscape. It's in the landscape. And here we can see it's actually quite interesting that in the, in the upper part you see these doors of the red hut, old doors, then in the left picture you see the new doors, and in the right picture you see the doors painted. 
And it, it was actually a coincidence when I picked the pictures and I said to my wife, hey, look, this is actually quite nice. We can see the process of these three doors and it's like two years time <laughs> to complete one doors. <laughs> and I just want to share with you because it's, a, it's a, about work and time in the farm. It's all about the rhythms, the connections, the timing. But for me, also as a social person, a person who um, feels very comfortable, for example, in the stage like this in front of you, my dear friends, to go to this area of Hame, which is extremely silent, I always laugh that, you know, gods, they do have very good sense of humor. <laughs> they, they send, they send this, this boy who likes to speak in a place where there's no talk. And five years, five years, I, I, I really struggled it. And if I would, you know, would, would talk here with my colleague, Joana, and I would say, okay, Joana, next year, what, what, what we do in the farm? Should we invest new tractor? You know, let's build greenhouse. You know, wow, let's get uh, students. Let, let's grow this and this and this. Joana would be here. Yeah. <laughs> And, to, and to, really, to really get this, this reflection, this, this reflection of Joanna's eye to my eye. And, and it's like, seriously, man, are you excited at all, you know? Are we doing this together? <laughs> but it was such an important lesson for me to learn that the most wisdom is actually within. The most wisdom we can experience is in the silence. We know from Rudolf Steiner, he gave to Herbert Hahn, a first, one of the first Wall of School teachers, he gave this meditation, which is quite in, enigmatic in one way. And in one part, he said to Herbert Hahn that the sword of Michael, as we're living in an age of Michael, we're living in an age of courage, the sword of Michael is hidden in the forests of Finland. <laughs> And imagine this, you know, okay, if I say I go to Forest of Finland, like Uli said, you know, you don't see anyone there. I probably see a bear or a wolf, you know, <laughs> but sort of Michael, come on. <laughs> but for me, the realization, what, like I, I try to put here, and also you can see the chest of this picture, like Kalervo, this amazing knowledge, this, this enthusiasm that he's explaining me probably how to, how to reverse tractor or something like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, I don't even know the, the words, you're, you're, what they mean, like you're speaking to me. <laughs> because when you come to cities, I had to, two years, I had to learn the agricultural words, what they actually mean. And um, the sword of Michael, Actually, for here, well, like I said, the flower made of us the image of social life. It was a big, big realization that probably what Rudolf Steiner meant is that it's not a physical sword, but it's a, it's a quality that it's within. Because if you want to hide something, you have to hide it in the forest of Finland. You never, never find anything there. So, so the sword of Michael, we have to find it within. And what it is for me, it is the silence. It is the ability to listen. And when we listen to another person, when we listen to nature, we can actually come to the, to the realization that it's my conscience, my higher self, which is speaking to me. And these talks with Kalervo, Joona, Sirka, my wife Maria, absolutely endless, endless source of inspiration for me. Because also my wife is in the area of Hame, which is extremely silent. <laughs> so, so the experience that when we learn to listen to each other, we can actually co-create in the social plane. And the meadow, for me, it's the symbol of the social plane. And if you look at the meadow here, well, it's not meadow, but it's a little bit like that. And imagine in Finland, if you have a very poor summer, if you have a wet or cold summer, the, the plants, they made flower maybe you know, five days, ten days, and oops, they're gone, wait another year. So, so the, the flowering stage is very fast, usually in Finland. And um, as I look you, my friends, now also, and I, as, I, as I hear the, the presentations today and, and, and in India and all around the world, it comes also quite naturally to me to understand that in the social plane, it's actually where we create, where we do the transformation. And as we beautifully heard from the, from the 
presentation of India that it's not just the ecological plane you're transforming, but in the end it's also the social plane. And that's another wisdom for me that I learned also, this old Rosecrucian wisdom that when, when you think about you want to make a change in the, in the nature or society, you have to always make it in these two planes. Ecology and sociology are actually two sides of the same coin. If I want to farm ecologically, ecologically I also have to transform the social plane. It's, it's, it's not, they, they go hand in hand as well. And what I've learned also, which me is the farm individual, the most brilliant experience, it's in the social plane. And through this silence, through this understanding that a person can be very excited inwardly, even though he's ex not excited like me, like here, but if a person is a silent, he or she can be actually very aware. And I call this sort of a social mystery that I discovered, that um, if you have a group, working group, and there's always a person who's a bit silent, and sometimes because we live in an age where extroverts like me, we have hijacked the world, you know, you have to be good in business, you have to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. But the most wisdom, the most best knowledge is within the persons who are in silence. And because they contribute. And, and you have to remember when you come outside of the 400 year family farm, it's very difficult to make it work because you have to, you have to make it work juridistically, socially, economically. We work 10 years in a regular farm to find a, a structure that it is actually equal to every one of us. And for me, because I come outside the bloodline, I come outside the family, but I know I will have to invest my time, my money, my, my whole being to the farm. But how, how can I, I cannot say to these pe people, oh, give me half of, half of your farm, like, you know, <laughs> I cannot do it. So you have to find a solution. So 10 years and every month we, we come together with Joona, Kalervo, Sirka and my wife and we have a very open plane. We have a very open space to have a dialogue. And there is the mystery happens. There, if you have completely honesty, you have completely respect to the other person, if he speaks or not, we can see the silent person is actually carrying the space. It's creating a chalice. And for me, that was extremely strong realization. And I took this, this part also to, 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 to come to conclusion that like this, we heard today is the first presentation that science is actually very fast knocking on the door of spiritual science. And uh, for me here is the, the one of the realization I, I learned from geometry and, and nature is also a very, very recent discovery that uh, the crystallographers, which is they, they study the mineral world and they have found in geometry of, of nature and geometry of basically everything, they have found this sort of quasi-crystals. And this German mathematician, Petra Gummel's discovery, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, Petra Gummel's Decacon might reveal what is happening in quasi-crystals. They may, may be a cluster of atoms, sharing atoms with neighboring clusters. Whatever implications this has to the world of the crystal crafters, it has a wonderful implication in the world of human dynamics. For it gives a scientific example in which sharing creates a situation that has more inherent strength than the situation that lacks sharing. And it's, it's phenomenal. And here we can see in the right, we can see a picture of Islamic mosque from 13th century. And this, this is, the science of packing and tiling, but this actually, this geometrical form can tell us that when we look the materialistic way, the materialistic science in the most smallest substances, in the atoms, and we see that we can create harmony, perfection, when we share, and it's unbelievable discovery. And this is what I in the end would like to share, because what we share in the farm, when we talk with the farmers, when we are working in the concept of farm individuality, we have now a possibility to share with each other. And through this sharing, through our individual experiences, we can actually learn these new qualities, how to relate time, how to relate work, how to face these materialistic questions of 
21st century. And this is just an example of materialistic science, but as you know, in the spiritual science and through anthroposophy and work of Rudolf Steiner, it's all about making the living connections. This is not the reality. The reality are you, me, and our dialogue together. And I want to end to this one last experience of, of my journey with the Finnish silent folk and discovering the, the art of dialogue. If you take, take the word dialogue, what will we have? We have the duality, we have the polarities, we have two, D. But we also have the logic, we have the logos. We have the creative, the creative spirit, the creative God. So when you have two and you're having a dialogue, you have God between. So when you have a dialogue, we can actually create. And for me, this is the most perfect example of meadow, biodynamic farm individuality and how to work, how to connect cyclical rhythms of nature. I thank you, dear friends, and I wish you a very good conference.